Hey, Levin's good day, and welcome to the tech. Um, I'm taking you through phase one. We're going to split this up into three videos so that we have phase one, phase two, and phase three. So this should help you with examples as to what your pet should look like. So let's just scroll through this. This is your official document. I'm going to put it in the description as well. I'm sure by now all of you have it. Don't. It's there. So they just deal with what is the pet. That. Right. We know our topic is the Internet of Things. There they give us our topic. Give us some of the applications because we need to choose one of these things. So this is our focus question. You can see there they give you the focus question. How does the Internet of Things impact our lives in? And then you've got to choose a specific application area. Now they say you need to choose one application area um, as the focus for your research. Here are the application areas. So uh, let's say, for example, I choose energy consumption. Then it will be how does the Internet of Things impact our lives in, or you could say with regards to energy consumption. And that will be the focus of your research. Okay. I'm just going to choose one of these over here. All right. So then they just give us some guidelines as to what we need to do, considering some of the areas. So they're giving you these hints and, and guides to help you find research. Okay, scroll down. Right, now when we get started, uh, consider the following terms. Okay, all these different things they want you to go through. Um, they've also got different articles and some YouTube videos with regards to that. And here are some possible resources for as well. Remember, if you are going to be using these things, Later on, when you need to reference any of this website, etc., but I'll go through. So, phase one, you need to create a proper folder structure. This is what it should look like. I think I've got an example here. So, there is my pet example complete. And in there, I've got phase one, phase two, and phase three. All right, so that is my folder structure. They do also want you to have um, a subfolder for sources. So then inside your phase one, you have another folder and you would call that sources. This is where you would save websites. Okay. Have your report. See there. Whether it's named phase one working document or report doesn't really matter, but the content is what is important. Then in your phase two folder, they have your original question here. So if I here, it's two. Here's my question here. Completed questionnaire saved in a subfolder. So we'll have to put in a subfolder. Same. Completed questionnaires. Spelling this incorrectly. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. All right. So ah, okay, no, it, I got it right. Woo! Okay. <laughs> yeah, spelling is not my, <laughs> my thing. All right. So I've got in there the completed questionnaire subfolder. So the document. Okay. Let me, let me, let me put it this way. You're going to create a questionnaire, right? The one, the, the original one, your, your, your one page questionnaire that has nothing filled in on it, hasn't been completed, right? Here's your typical questionnaire. This one that's not completed at all will be listed here. The document that is going to be completed, that it's 10 pages long or 20 pages long, depending on how many they want you to do, that document must be in that folder called Complete Questionnaires. Then we need to have an Excel spreadsheet and a database. And you can see there I've got my spreadsheet and I've got two database files. So I can show you the difference um, in what these two learners did. Right? Then in phase three, I need my final report and a website. So we uh, it's three website document station to do this. Okay. So grade elevens, this is what your folder structure should look like. You should have this should be who's this uh hand pet. Say given twenty twenty one because I've got things open, but 
that's what it should look like okay when you open it or when the teacher opens it this is what they should see phase one two and three and again phase one two phase okay so let's take a deeper look into phase one let's go down. okay so phase one remember all we have is our thought or our working document here you can see you need to have a cover page let's just go back to this cover page with your name and surname of your school subject name and pet topic and a content control for the abstract okay so if you've got a little abstract a little quote or something that you want to put here and put that down but generally this is our see there our first page is the cover page and then you also see our second page is the table of contents and when i click on it you can see that this is an automatic table of content so let's go and have a look here in fact i'll go through the rubric as well so some of the headings include table of contents intro task definition the content that we're actually putting into it our findings uh, findings and conclusion you, you can put that in but you'll only really fill that out um when it comes to phase three our bibliography and indices that we have uh, then they just say in here an addendum under the heading appendices you created in your report with a diagram or screenshot of the folder structure so this folder structure we looked at you're going to take a screenshot of that and you're actually going to put it in your report under the heading appendices okay so uh, let's say that is appendix a or sorry um addendum a so that'll be the main heading right uh, then you'll have addendum a and that addendum a will be folder structure and then that picture then there needs to be another addendum let's see yeah okay as you go down see you need to include this as well so whether you print it you know fill it in or you fill it in digitally and insert that in final report for phase three you've got to do that as well so let's continue so now we've got our cover page we've put our headings in place we now need to create a task definition document here you can see there i've got my task definition it must answer the following what is the current situation what will the focus and the purpose of my investigation be? How will I go about conducting the investigation? Who is the information for? And what format will it be presented in a task definition? You can see there should be around about 200 words. So if I look at this, it's 156 words. So more or less, that is, you know, the size of your task definition. And again, you are just, if you just answer those questions, get the marks as far as your task definition. Okay. After that, we have our focus question. And remember, you can see we've used the focus question that the PET gave us. We just filled in, obviously, what we are going to be focusing on research. So that will be the next thing. Then, this is the one, this is the thing that usually messes folks up quite a bit. And I hope it's not going to do that to you because it's simple so you're going to have the heading you can have research questions as your heading that's fine because that's the heading that will then reflect in your automatic table of contents from there they want you to create right three tables and here you can see them I want you to create three tables each with its own heading the purpose of these tables is to populate it with questions that's going to guide your research this has got nothing to do with the questionnaire okay so here, for example, this learner's got calendar management as the heading for these questions. So all of these questions here relate to calendar management. Why is it important? What does it mean? How can I improve it? What's important here is three things. Number one, it's got the heading. Two, it's got the questions. And then three, look, look on the side here, we've got level and a possible source. So for each of these questions, you need to indicate, is it a level one question, level two, three? Obviously, level one is sort of a yes or no. Um, level two would be a question that requires a little more 
thinking, level three, be a question that requires um, a more detailed answer, etc. And then with your possible sources, you can have 99% um, of them being the internet. In other words, you're getting the answer for that from the internet, but one of these sources has to be something different. So this learner, for example, has two that is getting magazine. So I want you to see this, have a good look at it. This is what you should have. The total of all these questions should be 10. Okay, so you can spread it out any which way you want to, but as long as you've got three tables, three headings, 10 questions, different types of levels put in, and the possible source. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go to the bibliography. So that will be just headings, and you just get document. And now they want some more info. So remember, here we said these are the questions. This is where we're getting the information from. Now they want you to evaluate three of those sources. And here you can see, as an example, figure this learner evaluated one source that came from the internet. You've got to put in the name of the web page, the URL. If there's no author, just put in a date it was created if that's not there just put not applicable the date you access that website and then you've got to put a little section here in um, in terms of summary so you just put in a line or two saying what type of information was actually um, on that website okay yeah you can see this is from a magazine this could even be your textbook that you are getting some information from so with a, with a textbook, you're going to have an author, you're going to have the date it's created, again, the date you accessed that particular book. Um, in this case, this was just an online article. And again, the summary of information that, is, that comes from that particular source. So, relevance, I hope you are with me. Like I say, got one, two, three tables there. Then our bibliography is going to have three tables as well because now we're evaluating those sources. You know, put that other info in. See what else they need. Yes, we're identifying the sources there. You can see in your pet document again. Ah, you also have to pop in, which I see this line I didn't do, uh, with uh, the information that you found. So you would have to put in here on the left hand side as well whether that information um, is current, in other words, is it up to date, is it accurate, is it objective, is it biased, um, does it cover you know, extensively the material that you're looking for, um, is it a valid site, you know, those, those sort of things. So you need to put that in there as well, not just this, I think, wait for that other one, uh, but you should have it in there as well so that you are not only identifying the source in more detail, but you are evaluating that source as well. Right, and then just to check in before you hand in phase one, like I said, you want to have your pet folder, your phase one folder. You just have one word processing document. So let's just look at the rubric for this. You can see just for organizing your documents correctly, you can get up to four marks. We have in the task definition that answers these questions and has around about 200 words, you'll get your next four marks. For having those 10 questions with at least three different levels, right, in the three tables, you can also get another three marks. Then those questions that we just looked at, those 10 questions, are they organized under appropriate headings? Do they have a possible source? If they do, there's your three marks doesn't say anything about the way it must be formatted, right? Obviously, you want to keep everything professional and neat as the document has stated from the beginning. Then, uh, when you begin to evaluate it with the bibliography that I showed you, got the source name, the URL, the author, and the date, boom, there's another four marks. And then once you evaluate that on a technical basis, two websites plus one other source indicating, you know, the, uh, the authority, the currency, all those things. If you've done that, you get three marks. Once you've completed the evaluation, and, and I just want to explain this. So you've put all that in place, right? That would obviously be based 
on doing it for two websites in one source. So this is actually a combined seven marks that you'll end up getting here for doing um, this over here. Obviously, this learner won't get that because they're missing one. Okay. Then evaluating the information. Like I said, that's another four marks for having a summary. A summary over here for each one of those sources. Another four marks. And that gives you your 29 marks for phase one. Relevant. That's it for PAP phase one. I hope that clears up everything and gives you a good idea of what's expected from you. So all the best with that, and I'll see you in phase two.